Come on, Rangers! 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 It is the Easter weekend. Dorking have a crucial Good Friday fixture at home to Chippenham, and on Easter Monday they must go to South East London and face a struggling Welling side. Yet before all of that, Mark's entire coaching team have headed south to Horsham, where they're taking charge of the under-18s, and we're going to let Mark explain why. Well, we're at um, Horsham, um, our under-18s, which is a really important side to us. I've conceded 16 goals in two games. The support they were getting, the boys, um, simply not good enough. And the first team management loved the club. And we've come here tonight voluntarily to manage the game. Woking need to win to win the league, so there's something on it. And we're looking forward to it. Duke is here, yeah, he's a teacher, so he should be used to this. But Tony, some of these could be his great grandchildren. We've talked to him about, we're going to try and stop them doing anything but going long. And I, and I just try to keep it simple and said, look, if you can understand simply how to stop this lot playing football, force them along, then you've learnt one thing today, you know, and all we worked on was just off the ball shape, stopping them playing and very, very, very minor um, on the ball stuff. I'm talking a couple of passes because it wouldn't be fair on them to give them too much info. I said, look, just standard rules, keep the ball, don't try doing too much. Don't wear gloves, don't wear necklaces, earrings, piercings. So all the standard stuff we live by, really. Stand next to a player. That's your responsibility, like it's going to be in the game in a minute. If he goes forward, you track him. OK, if he plays it and goes, you stay with him. Don't worry about him playing it and then pressing the ball. You stay with your man. Always. This is where Beardy's in his domain, by the way. He won the FA Premier League trophy under 18s last year. And now he's got Dawkins Wonders 18s, under 18s. That's a bit like fucking, that's a bit like shagging Miss World one week and fucking shagging Vanessa Felt the, the next week, yeah. <laughs> Don't do anything blind, you wouldn't do it in a game. Turn with a ball, pass. Turn, pass, pass. Do everything you do in a game. Turn, pass. Short, too slow, too slow. Speed it up, speed it up, speed it up, speed it up, speed it up. That's all right, keep going, keep going. Right, if anyone has too many touches, I'm um, just to let you know. I'll take you off after like three minutes, it'll be really embarrassing, so don't fucking have too many touches, OK? Right, listen, boys, I'll tell you what, I saw some fucking listening there, love that. I fucking saw some listening, love that, boys. All I'm asking you to do is listen, some of that fucking shooting across the keeper was fucking decent, fast feet, love that. No, nah, seriously, lads, I don't want to be fucking buzzing after this game. Don't get involved in ag, boys, don't win football matches. Be strong, get the ref on your side without swearing, but don't get involved in ag, just be really strong. Remember the score. Less touches, OK? Less touches, all right? Come on, let's go. Come on. The under-18s are up against a Woking side that's a one win away from winning the league title. As such, Mark doesn't expect to get the three points. But when Mark's on the bench, Mark is... Well, he's Mark. Ref! 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 Ref, get near the fucking game, man! Oi! Ref! Oi! It's three fucking fouls because you're over there, mate! You missed three, don't, it's not my fault you missed three fouls. What's your name, sir? Mark White, it's not my fault you missed three fouls. Don't get the up with me. Don't get the up with me about it. Switch on. Perhaps thanks to the coaching team's efforts, the young Wanderers managed to stave Woking off for half an hour before succumbing to the incessant pressure. Young kit manager Mitch may or may not have been at fault several times as Woking run out 5-0 winners. Not everybody was pleased to see the coaching team take an interest in the youngsters. And they couldn't understand the concept of a documentary either. Yeah, pretty much. I don't, I don't get why you guys have been moody about it. Really? You sound kind of aggressive to me. He's just rich. He doesn't know nothing about football. I don't know shit, mate. You're right. I don't know nothing, mate. Nah. You're right. You know more than you. Yeah, you know more. <laughs> <laughs> you know more, mate. You know more. You know more than me, mate. That's what that's what matters. That's what matters, mate. <laughs> you, you're a player, you ain't you? I've heard you're a good player. <laughs> Well done, mate. Well played, mate. Well played, mate. Cheers, pal. Well done, mate. Well played. Right, lads. Well done. Come in, lads, quickly. Come in. 
Let them just calm down a bit, yeah? Boy, I thought there was fucking so much to like. This weren't about them, do you know what I mean? Fair play, if team wins the league, that's how it is, they deserve to win it, do you know what I'm saying? So that's their thing. It was just about us tonight and you lot. And you had a shocker the other night. But actually, the performance was all right. It was okay. And I've got to be honest with you, I'm not the type of guy that bullshits, right? And I can see that you don't quite know your pattern. You know, you don't know your first pass or... And, and towards the end, we started working out the first pass and then we don't quite know the second pass. And that's just the pattern on that. So, yeah, boys, to be fair, football's all about where you're going with it. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, and today there was a lot of good things. I wouldn't say that, I'd just say a wank, do you know what I mean? Loads of good things, and you've had a minimal input, in my opinion, to this point. So Beard is gonna sort that out and give us a pattern identity, okay? All right, boys, so well done. All right, well done. Second half was okay, well done, boys. Get yourselves changed. You keep the management, well done, boys, well done. Cheers for doing tonight. Cheers for you two, obviously, coming out tonight and grafting and that in the week, do you know what I'm saying? Obviously, we need an identity, don't we, about the team and because if you've got an identity, you've got half a chance. But a lot of our boys don't know the, the sort of first phase or the second or the third. So it's very difficult tonight. But thanks for doing, you know, for coming tonight after fucking getting drummed. But they're a better side, better individuals, better coached, better managed, better set up, end of. So, yeah, we're only one division below them in terms of our stature. So we, that's where we've got to be, really. <laughs> So on to Good Friday. Dorking remain four points behind Maidstone, who don't have a fixture today. Thus the Wanderers can put their rivals under increased pressure with a win over Chippenham, a club sitting just below the playoff spots, who hope to save their ailing season. Both sides will be feeling the heat today, quite literally, because it's so very, very hot. Happy days. This is the fucking level of this sort of shit, this weather, this is hot. Got to be um, mindful of that today. Not ideal when you've got boys that haven't played like Jace. Takes a little bit extra, doesn't it? Obviously the warm up, we've got to take some minutes off it. Definitely don't want to give away an advantage by doing too much in the heat. But I think this team are going to be in the game until the 95th minute this team. But they're young. There are a lot of young pros, second year pros. Game management. So from the side, we've got to be shrewd in the heat. If we take the lead, even better if we're 2-0 up, the game should be very slow. Do you know what I mean? Like, let's not gas. Let's not gas last 20 minutes on a hot day. It'll be the first time I played in heat, so just little things just to remember. And I'm saying it to you in case I forget and you're going fucking, don't forget what you said if I'm going fucking this, that, the other. Do you know what I mean? Yeah? They're, they're, they're going to be a counter attack team. They're young, they're dynamic. Get them into that spirit, yeah? All right. Sun's out, bank holiday football. And everyone loves playing at Medibank. We get a good, big family friendly crowd, don't we? So, um, yeah, mate, Oppo arriving, long trip for them from Chippenham. And um, yeah, we're in a good place, mate, to be fair, in a good place. Well, um, Alfie's been ill this week, so he's here and he's gonna do a little training session, but we sort of left him out, took that decision. He couldn't train, um, he couldn't train, and we just thought with a game Monday, um, we'll just sort of leave him out really, cause he won't be 100%. And to be fair, in the heat and that, he would have struggled, I think, so. You, um, you had a bit of a fun night last night. Um, certainly an interesting one with the, uh, with the kids. What did you take away from that? Yeah, no, I learned that the club's got to have um, a lot of investment. Um, probably the academy's got a lot of people in it. I feel like we've sort of like stretched our resources. Great set of lads. And actually I felt quite bad for them that they didn't have the technical aspects drilled into them that the, the boys around me and the first team do, you know? I plan just to enjoy it. It's a lovely day. We get big crowds down here and the boys really love playing here now. Like, and it's really weird for me because I've never really had, I've never really known a home advantage, what that is. And, you know, it always used to be, if you were playing Maidstone, Dartford, people would say, yeah, big home advantage. And you'd be like, yeah, it is. And because they have big, consistent crowds. And now the, we have a home advantage. Like we get great crowds that really get behind the boys. And, you know, we can be like a steam train here. If we need to get a result second half, we can be like a steam train with the fans. So the boys, love playing here, do you know what I mean? They love playing in front of the fans. Right, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16. Are all the boys out there, Sammy? Yeah. 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 I'll tell you what I'll do, because it is hot. Do you want to go and start with these? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Sammy? You got your own way, mate. You've been away, Alfie? No. 
I've been around the block, mate, a long time. I'll be doing a little fucking test, mate. I'll be doing a little test for mosquitoes. <laughs> Mosquito test, Alf. We got one in the physio bag, mate. You've been near mosquitoes at a flag. He's got a tan. He's got a tan. Right, lads, okay, so we'll get some good magnets soon. Get some, get some more investment in the club next year. No, it's okay, mate, we're all right. It's just the different sizes that fucking drive me mad. This is becoming a good home advantage down here, you know, it really is. We need a result, second half, like, it's a real fucking, we're like a steam train down here. So we left off in front of our fans, um, scoring goals. Great shape, great pattern, neat and tidy, that's where we left off. There's a load of boys out there that ain't even named. Ain't even named, and there's some good players out there not even named, okay? There's gonna be five shit-hot subs as well today. That's how good we are. So if you're in that starting 11, don't be having a remotely mute game. Do you know what I mean? Like every bit of information, every instruction, get it right. Every, every bit of information you can give somebody, give it. You know, do everything right if you're out there today in that chosen 11. Okay, boys, it's gonna be a great weekend. We're two games a week now. Football is back for us. They play if they can. Remember this. They do every throw, bang, quick. Every free kick, quick. From our corners, when we've delivered a corner, if their keeper gets it, quick. They're a counter-attack team, they're young, they're quick, they're straight at you. So this is why we've got to be compact, more row, you've got to organise the whole time, okay? So just remember that for the whole game. The number nine's not a bad player, Jordan Young, and he shoots on fucking sight. If he, go, he, he also goes in to get the ball, go with him. Just go with him. Good, that's about them. Our bit, discipline. Just remember the Hemel situation down here when it was fucking, we had kittens for 90 minutes when Dan came out of the box. It was like the most stressful Dan. Well, I lost about a year that day, mate. Right, okay. Like... In the box, <laughs> no, 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 no. Well, yeah, because that bloke fucking shoots from distance. But no, on a serious note, right, the ref seems a nice guy, right? Just get the ref on our side. Keep your discipline. Last thing, don't want to isolate Jason. So as much as he will make up the magic man when we're transferring it, Maka, go and join in. Join in, join in. No isolating him. Jimmy and Noel, um, if you're not taking people on, not shooting, whatever, he's a big area to aim for. You don't have to, re borderline don't have to look up when you've got a striker that big. You are just thinking, like Nicky does, I'm just gonna fucking touch. If I put the ball at a decent height, it's a fucking fair chance he's gonna find his way on it, okay? But let's be good, we're fucking superb boys. What a fucking team we are, right? So we're gonna fucking enjoy it, but we're gonna get it right. Don't want. The 11 chosen and the five today are ahead of six boys out there, including Alf, who could have played, right? That's how good we are, right? So be fucking switched on and ready, okay? Come on. Come on, boys. Simon Lawrence, I'm the commercial manager for Chippenham Town Football Club and a long-time supporter. 25, going on 26 seasons um, that I've been following Chippenham. Um, yeah, you say you fall in love with it at an early age, I guess it's uh, true, isn't it? You can't get away from it. Uh, so I'm Nathan, big Chippenham fan, follow him home and away. Uh, best I can, got a little one, so it makes it hard to travel. Also coach myself, but with it being Easter Friday and all, it's a good chance to get down, see a new ground, uh, nice ground, a team that are developing in, in Dorking Wanderers. My sons are in their fifties now, and I took them when they were in their oh, fives and six. So uh, it's quite some time, but uh, continuously we've been uh, following them around the place, and uh, we like to come their way to places like this to see how they're uh, how they how they're performing. Recently, it's been really exciting time. So you know, we've probably had a good season up until this point. Um, I'm sure that you guys remember um, at the turn of December we played Dorking at our place and. Uh, everyone was expecting that to be a bit of a, uh, an away win and we somehow came away 4-1 winners and we've sort of put our own little playoff ambitions together and then uh, after a defeat last week against Maidstone, our manager resigned. Um, uh, I think he's just sort of looking out for, looking out for next season and you know, plans ahead and I think he's given our interim manager Gary Horgan a good six games now to stand in and stake his claim for the job. We're not massive at all.
outrageous. Uh, no, we were Western League for years, went to the Southern League, uh, got a few ex-professionals in, like Andy Sandell, uh, Dave Pratt was up front, we walked the Southern League. Been in this league now for three, four, five years. Um, not too ambitious, you know, where we are now is probably where we want to be. I don't think we have ambitions as a club to go higher at the moment. Moving up into the National League has been a tremendous move for us. Um, obviously, it's got its problems, um, additional problems rather, that uh, we had before. Um, we were top of the Southern League and got promoted and came into this league. We've signed the appropriate players and we're surviving well at the moment in this uh, in this division. Uh, expectancy is different from reality. Um, the reality is we should come down here and we should have a... Yeah, we should have a really, really tough game on our hands. Dorking are a far superior side in terms of stature, um, of course, in terms of the budget, the money that goes around at, at Dorking. We all know it's a famous story, but I'd like to think that you know, we've got a, a very good underdog mentality and we're not coming here to lose, let's put it that way. It'd be tough. Uh, Dorking would be looking for revenge after we did them at our place. Um, no one knows what to expect, really. We've got an interim manager in charge. Um, Mike Cook walked last week, so Gary Horgan's taking the reins today. Um, so we don't know what to expect from either side, really. Dorking will be looking for revenge. We'll just be looking to keep it tight, I think. We're just outside the playoffs, so if we could get three points, it would be a bonus. But I'd be lying if I said I wouldn't take a point today. I am James Brown, the one and only. Uh, I'm here supporting Dorking. Great season so far. Hope they can do even better. Well, it's, well I, just, I like supporting the local team. I mean, also, as everyone knows, Arsenal's extortionate as well, so it's hard. It, obviously, try to go there as much as I can, but it's really expensive. But I like supporting the local team. I think what Mark and the players are trying to do, I think, yeah, it represents that. They try to play the ball, they try to move it. And yeah, it's actually, it is actually a good level of football. I do enjoy watching it. Got, got to hope for a win. I think, I think we should have it. They're what, mid-table? Mid We're pushing on, hopefully, for the league. Oh, let's hope for a 3-0 win, at least. I think it's going to be busy, though. I think it's going to be, like, fucking 1,500 plus, which ain't bad for this sort of thing. John's coming down anyway, but... Scouting expert John the Bible has taken a look at Chippenham's team sheet, and he's concerned that the opposition may be playing a surprise 3-5-2 formation. Oh, really? Yeah. So obviously we look, you know, we're looking at a four-one-four-one, but looking at that team, it's a high possibility of a three-five-two. Right, that's interesting. They've yeah. not played that way all fucking season. Well, Bray and Greenslade, who are both both playing fullback this season, both playing. So I just assume they're going to be wing backs. They're going to be a fat back five or something, aren't they? Oh, that suit yeah. us, mate. That suit us, mate. If they give us an overload, that'll do for me. Okay. Yeah. Will you be? Yeah. You're here, yeah, aren't you, John? Yeah, I'm coming now, yeah. yeah Alright, so Carl, now. you've got his number? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Alright, mate, so during, during, Carl will give you a bell early on just to make sure we got it right. All good set pieces. John the Bible reckons they're playing 3 5 2. And played it all season. He, he said they've got three centre halves and their normal fullbacks are playing. Oh, I tell you, if he gets that right, fucking hell, that's a good call that from him. That's what I've just said. I've said, mate, if they, they've come down here to play us. Maybe he has, maybe he's thought new manager, right, what we'll do, that's a good idea, I'll do 3 that's 5 2. Right, boys. Right, this team. This team's two points from the playoffs, OK? So they are absolutely here today to cause a shock. And it would be a shock against a team like us. We've got to take care of business. What I mean, it's fine margin. Isaac, yeah. the information from you to a teammate could be a fine margin, right? All of you, get the fine margins right. I think the main aim here is, now, there's a chance they might play back three. If they do, then obviously brilliant, we'll have an overload and we do that week in, week out. If they don't, Dan Lincoln will rely upon you <laughs> to play around the edges quickly, okay? If not, Macro come in, make a box, all right? Being compact off the ball is key, right? Don't forget, it's 90 minutes, it's a long time to win the game. Get on the ball early, really fucking relax, that's what we do. Okay, boys, let's go, come on. Niall, come on, son. Boy, we win today, mate. What a landscape this is Monday for the competition. Coaches Dino and Carl immediately have to figure out if the opposition are indeed playing a back three, while the home side spread the ball around the back and probe down the wings as per Mark's instruction. 4-2-3-1. Four, 4-2-3-1, two, three, one. Four, two, three, one, mate. There's your two holders, there's your three, there's your one. Yeah, so you've got your seven, seven, nine, ten is your holder out there. Your two sitting, so your pivot is 14 and 19. Forward! 
Right, and they're going to be the fullbacks ain't going to get on either. Carl has the formation sussed, but the wingers haven't delivered a cross. And with Jason Pryor waiting in the box, tossing it in there seems like it would be a good idea. Win it, Dan. Good, Dan. Ice! Ice! Don't forget Jason's playing. Oh, no, no, it weren't easy. It was static. I oh, know, it weren't easy. The game might be young, but Dorking have chipping them on the ropes. McManus, Philpott and Josh Taylor are working the ball down the right flank, giving Town's left-hand side far too much to deal with. Touch strikes. Six minutes into the game and a sort of shot, possibly a cross, it's really hard to say, from Cal Kennedy, cannons off the hip of striker Jason Pryor and he caps his first start in three months with a goal of minimal effort. Oh and by the way, we've mic'd up Dukes, he's the quiet one. He's not happy about it, but he does have some interesting things to say. Massively on here for Niall, eyes to Niall, that geese is holding back from him, the ball geezer. So the ball from Isaac to Niall can work really quickly. Oi, relax them. Relax, all the chats relax. Chippenham immediately set about grabbing an equaliser. Wanderers fail to clear their lines and Doorway eventually sets up Doorway no, no. and he shoots from close range. As a 10 turn 13. Dan Lincoln makes the save but Dorking again can't clear and Doorway lines up a chance from 20 yards. See that? Do that, Jimmy. You'll get that. <laughs> Chippenham keep on coming, and Dorking are forced to sit in their own box and repel the waves of attacks. We'd like to keep the doorway gag going, but it's impractical. Number nine doorway, aka Jordan Young, is dropping in all over the front line and proving incredibly hard to mark. It is worth noting that both teams are playing in fully sublimated kits, which is what our sponsor excels at. Check out fcfootballkit.com in the description if you're in the market for a bespoke quality and frankly gorgeous football kit next season. In the team talk, Mark told his players to send the ball Jason Pryor's way and for James McShane to run off him, like this. Goal. The approach works as expected, with Pryor laying the ball off into McShane's path. But the diminutive midfielder can only poke the ball wide of Will Henry's goal. Dan, outside! Outside! Round the corner, Josh, go on, Josh is gone, go on, go on! Josh Taylor makes a move around the outside, and Isaac Philpot picks him out. Just moments after the previous miss, Pryor once again tees up McShane, and this time the attacking midfielder finishes better than Sub-Zero's spine rip. Unfortunately for Dorking, defender Isaac Philpot has taken an elbow to the face, and he's not feeling too well. Even more unfortunately, it was Jason Pryor what done it. Go down. You can't come over here. Stay down there. Head injury. Ref, just quickly mate. Ref. The, fir the first one you didn't fall for, the three keeps diving. Now, I, I wouldn't tell you unless it was true. Just keep an eye on it. He, yeah. The first one you saw, and he's done it again since and got away. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, no, mate, we don't dive. I wish they did. <laughs> mate, he's got a head injury, by the way. You just have to. Yeah, that's fine. I love that he's doing one ice kid. I know. <laughs> budget, so they'll, they'll get the budget. They can't even afford mineral water. <laughs> Isaac. Josh. That, that's the ball. Yeah. Brilliant. So easy. Listen to me. Dan, Dan, listen to me. Come here. You see what I mean? Play into the press or just put a ball here. Either into 10 or the third man or the wing of feet. Listen, are we all in here? Where's the I, fucking I, team? Hey! Jimmy! Listen, listen, listen. Listen to me, Kennedy, especially you, Jimmy. All you've got to do here is go into winger. Listen to me into 10 or third man, and eventually they'll drop off and it'll be easier to get into wingers. Right, don't play into the press, okay? 
boys, well done. No good, mate, no. No, I'm alright. No, it's fuck, mate. It's no good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sit, go down. Take, he's fucked. Let me sit down. I'm worried about him. Sit down. There is no doubt that Mark is indeed worried about the welfare of his player, but he also knows that Ed Harris has to get ready. We're going on, mate. Let's go. Let's go. We're ready. Don't matter, shin pad. Fuck them. Don't wear them. Don't matter. You don't need fucking shin pads. Fuck that. What happened? What did you get an elbow? Mark's concern for Philpott's welfare is touching, but it's nothing compared to how he feels about Nar McManus being endangered by Danny Greenslade. Fucking hell! Fucking hell, man! Man! You fucking get away! Get the fuck away! You, he done him! He, he, you know what he done! It's a straight fucking red! Yes, it is! You know it is! Same thing. I'm going to do him as well, yellow, OK? But we can't react to that. OK. okay. Mark accepts his yellow card with surprising grace, although he is adamant Danny Greenslade should be taking an early bath. He's got away with a straight red, mate. It's not a straight red. You've got, you've just, got, you've just tell me what he's done and then I'll tell you. Red, okay? I'm going to, I appreciate done, the chat. Okay, he's recklessly gone through him, OK? And that's why it's a yellow card, that's why it's not a red card. OK. That's a free hit, wasn't it, for him? Free. It's the free hit, isn't it? Just fucking walloped him. Back to the on pitch action, and Chippenham number nine, Jordan Young, is continuing to cause problems with his movement, and Coach Carl has spotted the danger. Bilo, that's the only out ball they're having, mate. The nine keep dropping right in deep and receiving the ball. Yeah. And I, they don't know whether they go or go or pass him on. That's but that's, that's the only thing that they're getting him through when he drops him deep. We don't know whether we stick or twist to that. We must go. More I don't look for this. Expect some red card, don't know. Red card. Red card! Red card! Tom Dukesy Duke is the man behind the set play planning, including the long throw routines. Next one, we get Max to go and get it to her, unless this is successful. Yeah. Well, Billy Ricky had been one first contact, or, but to be fair, they've got an extra two centre after that. Dukes' plan to bounce the ball off the upper back of Jason Pryor, cause a goalmouth scramble, and have James McShane poke it into the net as if he were playing Wembley singles in Bramble Tye Park Middle School's upper playground works like a charm. Let's go! Let's go! No, you're right. Are you, are you feeling your normal self, genuinely? Yeah, yeah. Just got, just got a slight knock from that one. Just a slight bit, mate. We're running off. It'll be fine. Oi, mate. Oi, you'll get Liverpool early. You'll be there by six. Get up, left, that's it! You okay? Hello, mate, you're right. Yeah. Hey, I appreciate you talking to me like that. I really appreciate that. I really do. When you see it back, just so you know, it's like a double red, that one. No, when you see it back, it's not even, it's not even orange, it's a double red. All right? Oh, mate. Cheers, mate. Nice one. No, you're coming off, son. You don't see yourself. You're coming off, OK? All right, mate? You've been our best player all season. You don't see yourself, OK? Jimmy, you're going, on, you're going on the right up against the ball guy. He's just going to foul you. You've got to commit him. You've got to commit him. Don't let him, don't let him stand you up. He's quite good. He's, he's all right, you know? He drops off a little bit. No, I was right in what he's saying. What we've got to do is, it's, the first, it's your first two touches. If your first two touches are at him, yeah. the dropping off won't work. Yeah. Right, listen up, boys. Loads of time here. I know um, I don't think Niall's right, so, so we are two subs down. That's just how it is in this game, OK? And if it finished 3-0, that'd be a great day. So we don't even need any more goals. But we're kicking to our fans, right? So, cut the fine margins. How switched on can we be? They got two free kicks. We didn't get in the front of one of them to stop them taking it early. I need you to really, really... You all right, Cal? Yeah, yeah. 
I need you to switch on, right? Switch on, please. Stop them doing things quickly, okay? They've got winning runners. And, and for me, if you two don't pick up tighter, that's when the little fouls start. Because what happens is your teammates start overcompensating. Moro might think, I'm gonna go in there and try and win that, because the bloke's spare, he, he's gonna attack the immediate danger, and then you get the little fouls. It's just a game to be tight in there, lads. We're 3-0 up, right? It's a game to be really tight in midfield, okay? Right, tighten up, pick up your men, and just on the ball, we'll do our bits. Off the ball, tighten up. That's a big deal. Kick into the fans, okay? And also, our fans want to see us score goals. I want to send them home happy. That's why they keep paying the money coming back, <laughs> all right? So we must, must, must speak. You've got to get the combination between, between pleasing the fans, speeding the game up when you need to, and being clever when you need to, right? Get that right, okay? Come on. I know it ain't ideal having one sub with Jason. I probably should have thought about that, but I'm not being funny. The way I see it is, I think, nah, it's fucked. Yeah. At the moment, it's all going to plan. 3 nil's good. So in any event, we've had a good day. If we finish this game, 3 nil. As a chairman, Mark wants the goals in order to keep the fans happy. As a manager, he wants the goal difference in case Maidstone slip up. So what now follows is all of the action worthy of your attention in the second half, as Dorking attempts to double the score. Well done, Let's go. Indeed, well done, well done. Good luck Monday, boys. We know what you're thinking. We took the Barry Glenn Denning approach to our work and simply couldn't be bothered to do our job properly. But truth be told, one penalty shout aside, absolutely nothing happened in the second half. See you next year, pal. Cheers, mate. Mate, that penalty on Fogden. He can't get out of the way. If he, he goes down, if he stays on his feet, he wipes him out. Honestly. Hey right, mate, thanks for being talking to me though. I do appreciate that. Appreciate that goes a long way. Alright, alright. <laughs> Cheers, mate. Listen, are we all in? I think the demeanour means you know we were you know we weren't great. We dashed a little bit there. Now look, I'll give you credit because they're a bit of a deceptive team. They don't stop running. They don't stop running. They're young. They don't stop running. I think, you, and, and two weeks off, again, do you feel all right now? Yeah. Two weeks off also sometimes finds you out because you've still got to find your match pace. Okay, but we'll definitely need fresh legs on Monday, 100%. I thought today we had too much for them, to be honest with you. And we done our job. We got our goals, okay? and then we had a couple of great chances. But then at the back, we went mute. It was like, I th we were like, we were defending with an extra man, which we never do. I don't know why we were doing that. So Nicky Widder's like having to pick up Callum's man and Callum's tucking in. And I just felt like if we're tired, I know when you're fatigued, sometimes you can't talk as well, but I think talking's easier you know, than, than doing 100 metre sprint. And I just felt like, Callum, that it, when you start walking about at the back, it wasn't just you, I thought the back four, but half the issue was your own doing, because you're having to absorb so much pressure, because if I do the clip to playing out, you're narrow. See, his options are, are pretty limited, in my opinion. Now, I'll watch it, because I'll watch it, because there was a time at the end when you couldn't just give it to Dan and you didn't, but I'm a fair person, I'll watch it, but it looked to me like, we was a little bit like, we're 3 new up, so when we get the ball, we won't necessarily do the dynamic movements we, we would do at nil-nil. And as a result, we're having to do more direct plays. And as a result of the direct plays, the ball's coming back at you. Right, so that's just obvious, isn't it? That's what happened. So, but the job was done and we haven't played. Jimmy, your head's like fucking no. bright red. Is that wrong with you? <coughs> like a fucking beetroot, you're right. Huh? Do you like the window for Jimmy? <coughs> a fucking traffic light. <laughs> fucking hell, Jim. <laughs> Look, all the teams won around us today. A few draws and that, but that doesn't matter now. Is it five to go or four? four five. How many? Five. Oh, fuck, that's a lot of football, man. That's a lot of football, five games. <laughs> that's a lot of football, boys, yeah? We're going to Welling on Monday and... 
they will be literally like they've just won the fucking uh, Kent Cup. They were three 0 down at half time, just got a free all. <laughs> They'll be absolutely buzzing their tits off with that. Their changing room would be a little bit like the opposite of this. They'll be like, fucking get in there. The pitch is awful. Um, that game will take will take some winning. We played like we were going to win, and that's dangerous because you take them habits into the next game. You want to, you know, as the keeper, you want to be like, and I know you probably were. You want to be going, give me my fucking wits. In 80th minute, you still want to be, as part of one of our methods of playing out, Maka still should be making a box. The centre half should still be getting in the box. The centre half should still be putting into the winger's feet. The winger should be sharp. Do you understand? That weren't there. That weren't there. But we'll get really focused for that game. That is going to be a proper game on a grass pitch. And it is literally like the worst pitch you've been on in 10 years. It's like a, a pre a close um, end of season pitch at park football with no grass and hard and bobbly. Right? So it'd be a game where we've got to cover blades of grass, get up the pitch, win battles and just take our chances when we get them. Okay, boys? All right, lads? But well done. Monday's a big day in this title race. It's a big day. Let's get our win, okay? Right, get my shades. We had a really good start to the half. Had some great opportunities. Sometimes football's deceptive. The last sort of um, 22 minutes, if you like, half of the second half, we was on the back foot, sat in, we gassed. Up until then, we was all right, creating chances, a few penalty shouts. Um, sometimes you overexpect. We got it wrong with our training, which is rare for us. We, we gave them a day off last Saturday and we were going to bring them in um, on the last night, on the Thursday for the Friday game, really just to get them mentally switched on. I thought we weren't mentally amazing, but the minute you start, you know, bemoaning three nil wins, clean sheets, it's the minute it goes wrong for you. Positive vibes really um, going into our next game. Yeah, I think the heat kind of had a part to play in that. Um, whenever it's a hot day and on this surface as well, I feel like it, the surface kind of doubles, it feels like it doubles up on the heat. And I think that you saw some tired legs out there in the second half. Um, obviously three nil as well. As the game's going on, I think, you know, you're you, in the back of your head, you're thinking maybe we got Monday as well. Um, 3-0, make sure we don't concede, keep it tight, and that's a good result against a good team. I felt like what is good, we didn't, we didn't feel any pressure, we didn't really play as if we were under pressure, but in reality, in reality we were under pressure today. You know, um, our rivals have got a, a local derby against the team in third, a hatred job, and if we'd have given them a seven point gap, that had gone there under no pressure. So, have we thought about today long enough? We was under a lot of pressure, but we just, um, we, were, we were quite good as a management team, quite chilled and yeah, it was, it was a good win. To be completely honest with you, there's still so much football left to be played. I don't think you can start thinking like that. All we can really focus on is just us. And to me, beating a good team 3-0 is a good result. I mean, in the second half, could we have maybe played a bit better with a bit more intensity, potentially? Um, and maybe got another goal or two, which would have been even better for the goal difference. But if you'd have said to me before the game, 3-0, I, I, I would have taken that happily. There's five games to go. We, I think we've got to play um, a lot of teams in the playoff hunt. Hungerford, St Albans, um, to name a few. And I think, yeah, I think it's... Sometimes football hurts you when you least expect it. People are expecting us to get a wedding and win, maybe and looking for Mays down to slip up, maybe that won't happen. Maybe Mays down to slip up the week after. Maybe we'll slip up at Welling. Um, you've just got to have this incredible tunnel vision to worry about what you're doing. You just can't predict football. You can never predict it. It's the oldest cliche in the book, but just concentrate on us, win the games, and see where that takes us. So it's in, it's in Maidstone's hands. If they go and win every game, the gaffer said it before, we'll drive the trophy to them and happily Give it to them, they deserve it, you know? At the end of the season, whoever goes up deserves to go up. It's a, it's a long season, right? So, um, all we can do, we've had a great season up to this point. It's a great win today. Great win last time out against Slough as well. That's two good wins in a row now. Um, and I think just, just long may it continue. Keep going, game by game, focus on each game. Big game now on Monday against Welling. It would be another tough one. 
but you win that obviously dart for the player made stone so at that point once we win our game then you can go and look and see what's going on elsewhere but yeah for now five games left there's plenty of time plenty of football to be played um, and 15 points to be played for on like from our perspective at the moment we are looking at can we can we get a home playoff game which for, for our town would be phenomenal pack stadium uh, a semi-final where possibly if we win it, we'll be at home again in the, in the final. So what a chance to bring serious pressure football to the table. We've had this before. Um, so we're in a great position for that. We're in the semi-final of our County Cup, which we've never been in the, the final of. Well, we have been actually, but it's been cancelled for COVID. So we just kind of feel like we've got, we got a lot to play for. And surely it's not going to be predictable, surely. Five games, you know, who's going to go five W's, five W's? Can't see it. I think it's going to be, you know, poker job, really, to a degree. Um, so, yeah, we'll have to wait and see. Thanks for watching Bunch of Amateurs. You can check out our sponsor, fcfootballkit.com, on fcfootballkit.com, obviously. The fact that we really like their products makes our lives a lot easier. We haven't sold out. We, we're more than happy to tell you that fcfootballkit.com make really fucking cool football kits. Um, anyway, let's get back to comments of the week. This week it comes from James Ellett, who says, Don't tell my missus, but every Sunday night I offer to do the kids' bedtimes, normally around 7 o'clock, and it always takes around an hour. Lol. Well played, James.